On this week's episode of Pop Culture Weekly, it's all about Prime Videos, Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. Let's go! Welcome to Pop Culture Weekly with Kyle McMahon from iHeartRadio. Your pop culture news, views, reviews, and celebrity interviews on all the movies, TV, music, and pop culture you crave weekly. Here's Kyle McMahon. Na, na, na. Hello and what's up? It's Kyle McMahon and this is Pop Culture Weekly with Kyle McMahon and I am so happy for you to be here. This is a really awesome episode. You may have seen my review of Amazon Prime Videos, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. It is so good. I freaking love it. It is uh, the first two episodes come out today on Amazon Prime Video, and it is I'm a huge Lord of the Rings fan. I've talked about this before. We've been covering this series for feels like two years now, and it's finally here. And, you know, as a huge Peter Jackson fan who directed the original trilogy, you know, the original trilogy is probably my favorite movies ever. They are absolutely incredible. And I have a whole bunch of, you know, emotional attachment to them as well. I remember I saw the first one in theaters, but Fellowship of the Ring, like 13 times. I went at midnight to see it and then it got done at like 3.30 or whatever. And then the next morning I woke up and went and saw it again. I love the Lord of the Rings movies. Middle Earth they just bring you to Middle Earth, to a whole new world, literally. And I love that. The lore from J.R. Tolkien and his world is just incredible. And then, of course, the Hobbit films loved them just as well. And, uh, you know, now this is an extension of that world. It's it's really a prequel in many Aspects. It takes place thousands of years before the events in Lord of the Rings, and it really is just beautifully shot, wonderfully written. The acting is awesome. You know, there's hobbits and elves and humans, and I mean, it and it like expands Middle Earth more than I ever knew could be expanded. All of the information or I would say the majority of the information in Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power comes from the appendices and unfinished tales and the similar, I can never say that correctly. His other, you know, Tolkien's other works is where it comes from. So these aren't just, you know, this entire thing isn't just made up. It is based in Tolkien lore. And today I am talking with the cast, Charlie Vickers, Tyro Mahafadin, Tristan Gravel, Sara, Zwan Gobani, Megan Richards, Charles Edwards, Leanne Wadham. They all play incredible parts in this incredible series. Seriously, I am totally fanboying over the series, and I absolutely love it. I interviewed them in New York in Ryan Seacrest's studio. Thank you so much, Ryan, for letting me use your studio and uh, and talking with the cast of The Lord of the Rings. So side note, before we jump into Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power on Prime Video, we are doing, you know, I cover exclusively cover Firefly Music Festival every year, do interviews with, you know, the artists, the headliners, do backstage videos and man on the street stuff. And this year will be no different, except we're giving away a four pack of passes to see all of the wonderful things at Firefly. So you can go to popcultureweekly.com and enter to win right there. Or I'll put the link in the show notes as well so you can enter to win right there. But you and three lucky friends or loved ones or whatever can go to Firefly Music Festival in September at the Woodlands in Dover, Delaware, and it's going to be an awesome show. Green Day, Avril Lavigne, Mod Sun, uh, Dua Lipa. It's just a great lineup, and I'm excited to go, and I'm excited for you to win that four-pack of tickets. All right, back to 
Amazon Prime Videos, The Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. Let's kick it off with the first set of interviews. Let's talk with Charlie Vickers, Tyro Mahafadin, and Tristan Gravel. All right. I am so excited to talk to you guys. I am here with Charlie Vickers, Tyro Mahafadin, and Tristan Gravel talking about the brand new Lord of the Rings series. And I am so excited. I freaking love the show. Thank you guys for joining me on iHeartRadio. Thanks for having us. Thanks for having us. Of course. So first of all, I got to ask, what is it like for you to join such? I mean, this is like a legendary thing. Obviously, one of the biggest books in the world, probably besides the Bible. <laughs> <laughs> what is it like for you guys to to take part in something like this? It's a real honor to hold the bat on, I think, you know, and take the story forward in Tolkien's universe. It's, uh, it's a dream come true. Yeah, it's been... um. It was, it's been a big, obviously a big life change for all of us to yeah. become involved in something like this. Um, not only the the filming process, I mean, we all moved to New Zealand to, to do this. Um, a lot of, for a lot of people, that was moving to the other side of the world. And now, um, I guess this is very different. I think it's a lot of our first time experiencing a press tour of yeah. this magnitude. <laughs> so this is also an adjustment. Um, yeah. And how about for you? I mean, it's been insane. I think just being in, in a major production on its own is like such an honor and if, for it to be Lord of the Rings and be Tolkien, it's just, it's beyond honoring. Like, I don't even know how to describe my gratefulness. Um, it's It's been surreal. Um, there's so many words to describe it. Uh, but yeah, really happy to be here. And I think we're all super, super blessed. So were any of you, or were all of you, Tolkien fans before? Were you like, you know, Lord of the Rings fans? So my introduction came in 2001 with The Fellowship of the Ring. Mm -hmm. One of my favorite movies of all time. It's great, isn't it? It's absolutely fantastic. And then I went back and picked up an old copy of The Hobbit that was laying around the house. Devoured that, waited for the other two films to come out, and then read the books. So mm -hmm. yeah, I've been a fan for about 20 odd years now. Wow. Well, I'm younger than the trilogy itself. <laughs> so uh, I never really got into it until I, I got the role. Um, I obviously knew of Lord of the Rings, because how can you not? But um, once I got the role, I went back to the hotel room with the e three extended editions, and I watched them back to back with my mum, and no one had told us that you're not supposed to do that, because it was quite full on. But, um, <laughs> yeah, they're yeah. like six hours each. Yeah, yeah, yeah it, was, it was crazy. Uh, lots of snacks. Um <laughs> But yeah, no. I, after doing that, I, I read The Hobbit and yeah, sort of fell in love with it. I've watched a bunch of YouTube lore videos. Um, and yeah, I'd say I'm a fan now. So you said you had never seen The Lord of the Rings? No, no I'd, I'd seen bits and bobs of it because my dad would watch it. Um, but ne had never sat down before that? No, no. I knew it as like sort of the, the movie where the guy loses his finger and there's Gollum. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all I knew until I watched it. But yeah, I like it. It's great. I mean, it's really, it's really um, a testament to Peter Jackson in those films that I could watch it twenty years later for the first time and still thoroughly enjoy it. Um, yeah. And and how about for you? I mean, I I was more of a casual fan. Um, I I liked Lord of the Rings, and it was always the thing that I was like, oh, this is the coolest of the of the big you know popular stories. I think. Um, but I. My real way into it was I played the uh, PlayStation games. So mm, I yeah. spent many hours running around as Aragorn, actually. And I remember getting stuck trying to open the minds of Moria for hours and hours and hours. And just, I, don't think, I don't know if I ever got past that level. <laughs> and now the three of you get to play in that world, which is really awesome. Maybe one day as our own characters. Yeah, <laughs> on PlayStation. That'd be awesome. Uh, but now uh, acting in the world is pretty. It's pretty amazing, and and the sets and the the um the world they created for us were pretty spectacular. The level of I think detail and craftsmanship on every level, set construction, um, costume, all areas of the design were amazing. It does half the job for you as an actor, really. Mm. For for you, Charlie, you you have a new 
character, essentially. Is that, do you feel any kind of pressure? And I hope I just didn't put pressure on you, but when you were filming, <laughs> did you feel any kind of pressure? Uh, it's different because you have the pressure, I guess, of an original character. And when I think of an original character, I have a lot of questions. You know, if I'm like, you're going to put an original character into Tolkien's work, um, it better fit a bunch of criteria that as um, that I as a fan since you know since being cast in it I've read as much as I possibly could um and I think the showrunners have done an amazing job of making these characters fit in the world um they all have similarities with other Tolkien characters they assimilate into the to the world so beautifully um so I think there is added there's pressure in that sense, in in um, making them fit into their environment. But I think similarly, it gives you a good freedom as well um, from which to work from. And for the two of you, did you explore the append appendixes? Appendi appendices. appendices? Thank you. Um, did you explore the appendices in doing research for your roles? I mean, I'm, I'm also a created character. So uh, much similar to Charlie. I had to rather than looking in the source material for for sort of literal um, source for my character, I sort of took it from other characters in Tolkien's work. Like you look at characters like Isildur or Boromir and, and you sort of think about the, the corruption of a man's mind and how can how is the mind corrupted. And I think I sort of took aspects of them and sort of incorporated it into Theo to make him as Middle-earthian um, as possible. Yeah. So for you, Tyro, you kind of drew inspiration from various characters yeah existing in the world to bring your character to life here yeah for sure and like also sort of trying to incorporate incorporate the youthfulness as well to theo because obviously you know these are grown men at, at this point in time whereas theo is a young person so sort of looking at that idea and sort of just de-aging it by a few years so yeah. and tristan for you i guess that just leaves me then and, um... <laughs> Yes, I did. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I did read, yeah. And um, I think there were two, um, there was the Akalabeth and the Unfinished Tales, and they gave me a really good insight into the mind of Farazon. Uh, yeah, you see the, you see uh, Numenor in all its glory, you see all these statues, this one, the, you know, it, it, it's a description of the whole island. And you see the pride that borders on hubris, I guess, with many Numenorians. And that was, uh, I guess that was a good like foothold for me to have then. Mm. I, I've seen the first few episodes and I'm totally in love with this series. I saw it on the big screen, which is incredible. And it took me back to seeing the original films as a kid. And uh, I cannot wait for everybody to see this series. It, it's so exciting. It immediately, for me, brought me back into Middle Earth and expanded it in ways that I didn't even think were possible. So thank you, the three of you, for the huge part that you did uh, in, you know, in doing that. And um and thank you for your time here on iHeartRadio's Pop Culture Weekly. Thank you. Thank you. It was Thanks an absolute pleasure. Much, Cheers. Thank, thank you. you. Yes. Love, love, love those guys. I, you, oh boy. Charlie, especially his character, Hallbrand, is, oh boy mysterious i can't wait to see what happens with him and galadriel lots of stuff tyro playing obviously theo and tristan playing farazan Whew, this show is so good and i can't wait for you to see it so we can talk about it all right next up from the hobbit world sara zwangabani and megan richards Thank you, Sara Zwangabani and Megan Richards, for joining me on iHeartRadio to talk about Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. I love the show. I'm literally obsessed already. And, <laughs> and you two are two of my favorite characters in the series. Megan, you're a little bit, I feel like, of a troublemaker, even though you're not. Uh, you're kind of like like the good angel on the shoulder sort of thing, <laughs> but you're also like kind of in the mix of all the trouble. This is true. Uh, yeah. How fun was that for you to to do that in Middle Earth of all places? That's a, actually a really good question. Yeah, I 
I really loved it. It was so nice to be able to have that juxtaposition within Poppy because, yes, she tells Nori all the time, no, I don't want to do that. Don't do that. Come on, let's go back. But ultimately, she does do it too. She doesn't do anything she doesn't want to do. Right. It was really fun to sort of have that constant push and pull of, okay, fine, let's okay, fine, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> and it, no, it was really fun. And, you know, yeah, Middle Earth is Middle Earth. So it was really cool. It was very playful. It was a lot of fun. And how about you, Sarah, for Marigold? How much fun was that? Um, equally, it was a, a lot of fun because um, where we were and our sets were just so fantastic and the costumes. But it, it, it's a little more trying for Marigold mm. with, uh, <laughs> with Nori. Um, yeah. You know, uh, <laughs> she drives Marigold a little bit nuts. Um, but, you know, I, I, she loves her too very, very much. Um, so, no, I had a great time filming it. Just it was uh, – and sometimes it was just too joyous. Mm. <laughs> yeah. I, I love the whole – I, the whole set for you I mean I loved all the sets but I loved your your guys set the the most because I, I don't know it's, I th- just thought it was so cool and like family kind of community oriented yes. with the uh, the rest of the cast there and and I really loved that did did you guys kind of have your own little community with the other actors there or were you separate enough in, during filming that there wasn't that do you mean like within the Harfits or Within everyone, within within every well, both both yeah. Well, we had both, both. yeah yeah. 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 It, it sort of happened quite quickly actually, especially for the Harfords. We sort of I think because the way that it was written as well, and what was immediately on the page, um, you know, Patrick and JD are such incredible developers and storytellers, so it was already there, um, and we just kind of it was cast so well, so we just kind of slot into those. Those spaces, yeah. those roles, I think. And we worked collaborative, collaboratively. Um, <laughs> I don't even know if I said it right. Collaboratively. Yeah. Um, uh, as, as a group to develop our characters and our family and our community. Mm. So we became very close. Um, but also with the larger cast, we, we may not have shot with them, but we got together all the time. Like, yeah, yeah we became a very big family or 20 yeah, we really did. All of us, 21, two, 20, three. It yeah. is a giant, <laughs> giant cast. It is, it yes. It really is. Yeah. It's big. Um, but, but I think it's appropriate for how big the series is, you know. True, very it true. It really is. So for you, you know, when you're doing this, uh, did you draw from any particular, were your characters original to the bigger lore? And if not, did you draw from anybody in particular or did you kind of just brainstorm or workshop where you drew your inspiration from Mm. yeah i mean so we're not canon characters um and i mean i can obviously only speak for myself so yeah mine was very much like mine was very much um i i sort of as an actor i like to look at what's on the page in front of me and especially for poppy because she she I like to experience what she experienced in the moment mm. um, and as she was, as things were happening to and how she would genuinely react. So I, that's kind of how I approached it. And yeah, so we'd had like a lot of workshops and a lot of improvisations and movement and dialect. We had like a lot of time outside of working on set. Um, so we had a lot of time to be able to develop and everything. Mm. Yeah. And um, similar to, to Megan, I um, Marigold is an original character. Um, and so, again, really similar. I drew from the page. But then we had so many resources to, to assist us. Apart from working as a family ourselves together on our, our community, um, we had, as you say, the movement coach, dialect coach, the set design, the costumes, everything just all came together to create these fantastic characters. It yeah. was just a, a, a dream, really. Yeah. And, and I've got to ask, I'm going to ask everybody this in any interview I ever do, ever, for the rest of my life. Were you big fans of Lord of the Rings before starting this series? Like, were you, like I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I was a, a obsessed with the original movies and then The Hobbit. Really? You know, tril- obsessed. <laughs> and my family, as, kid, as a kid, my family would go like every Christmas or, you know, Thanksgiving, I think it was Christmas, uh, that they would come out and we would all go to the movie theaters. It was like an event for us. Yeah. Um, and it just put me in another world for three hours. And then for the extended edition, put me in another world for <laughs> six and a half hours or whatever. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so I was a huge fan. Were you guys, obviously you were familiar with the work. Were you like fan fangirls of it or 
Well, I was. Um, also, by the way, I love the idea of a family going and it's a big event. Mm. I just love that about the movies. It's just how it, how it can has that power. Um, but and and also now with the, with streaming, you, you've got these these mm-hmm. great things you can watch together. But um, yeah, no, I was a massive fan of Tolkien. Um, I read the books when I was really young, and um, it inspired a lifelong love of fantasy for me, which still continues. I'm a big fantasy geek. And then I saw the films when they came out around Christmas in Australia, and it was like an extra Christmas present. Mm-hmm. Um, thought it, thought they were astonishing and then now like full circle in in um the rings of power but also um speaking to before when we were talking about creating characters we also had a lot of um tolkien experts on the set so even though we were original characters we did draw from his works obviously Mm -hmm. um to, to a great deal as well yeah um mine's slightly different story i actually didn't even really know who tolkien was Really? So I wasn't even like aware of his work or who he was or anything. You so, had never heard of like The Hobbit or anything? Not really. Like, okay. I mean, it might have passed me, but like, it's so interesting as well. Like, watching back on it's referenced so much in so many things, other things like I've watched or I've read. So it's interesting to like re watch those things and be like, oh, I now understand that joke. <laughs> or, like, I now understand that reference. Okay. Um, but yeah, so this has actually been my first experience of Tolkien. So I was able to have a literal immersive experience by like, you know, being surrounded by all of these people and walking onto the sets and, and being in Middle Earth as well. So it was a very um, individual experience as, you know, every experience is. So, and I'm, you know, I'm so grateful that it's it's now a part, a big part of my life. Mm. I love that. Thank you both, Megan and Sara, for speaking with me. Thank you for entertaining me on, on you know, <laughs> watching the series. And then, of course, entertaining the world. This is a giant show that, you know, that is going to be ginormous. And I can't wait for other people to see it. So Neither can we. Yeah, can we <laughs> We're very excited. Yeah. Yeah, 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 I'm sure you've been like, can we talk about it? Yet? Yeah. So. <laughs> Thank you both for, uh, for coming on iHeartRadio. I really appreciate it. It. Thank, Thank you. you. Yeah. Of course. Hobbits, 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 hobbits everywhere. All right. Sara Zwangabani and Megan Richards, they play Marigold Brandyfoot and Poppy Proudfellow. I, I think the hobbits might be my favorite storyline so far in Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power. I just love the hobbits anyway. I mean, just the hobbits in Middle Earth, you know, and the whole Tolkien lore, I think might be my favorite people. Race? Race of people? I don't know what you call them. But in any event, uh, there are the hobbits. Let's get in to our final interview. This is Charles Edward. Charles Edward. Charles Edwards, who plays Celebrimor, the Elven Smith, and Leon Wadham. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Leon Wadham and uh, Charles Edwards for speaking with me on iHeartRadio's Pop Culture Weekly. I really appreciate it. I had to think about my own name there for a second. Thank you for joining me. I know you guys have been, you know, this is a, a ginormous show that's getting ready to launch and you guys have been literally around the world in a very quick amount of time uh, mm. to to do a, a public publicity publicity for it yeah we have so i appreciate your time here in new york uh speaking with me were you and i've asked everybody this were you big tolkien or lord of the rings fans before you got involved in the series yeah my mom was a huge fan so the books were in the house as long as i can remember but i also grew up in wellington in new zealand Mm. so when i was in primary school peter jackson was making the original trilogy Mm -hmm. everyone knew someone who worked on it you could not escape middle earth and then the movies came out and they were massive and we had this massive sense of national pride and then when i was in drama school they started making the hobbit trilogy so i was old enough that i would run into people from uh those movies just out and about i vividly remember martin freeman coming to a party at my flat wow and thinking this isn't right (laughs) um so it's bizarre now to be involved in one of these stories i never saw a home for myself inside of tolkien's work but this character in this part came along and here we are did you want to be in those hobbit movies i didn't think i'd be useful okay i honest because i can't ride a horse um (laughs) i'd be useless in battle i'd die instantly you know there wouldn't be a lot of um story there um but this 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 part i have found my way into it's it's a tragically um good fit (laughs) (laughs) and how about for you yeah well i i was um very obsessed with it Mm. actually when i was uh sort of eight or nine 
my, my the equivalent of the Peter Jackson experience for everyone else for me was a it was a an animated uh, Lord of the Rings film that oh. came out Ralph Bakshi in, yes. in 1978 which is when I was whatever I was 7 8 9 whatever I was and that was my kind of moment of wow and uh, and then I became obsessed with it and um I wrote a play of the Lord of the Rings wow and um that I wanted I, I had a t- my mum bought me a typewriter and I typed it all out with one finger Really, and I typed out scripts for everybody, but no one wanted to do it, so we never did it. No. <laughs> um, and uh, yeah, and then I went went to the Hobbit, and then the Lord of the Rings, which I remember finding quite hard work at that age, and the Silmarillion, which is totally impossible at that age. Mm-hmm. It's totally impossible at my age. Mm. It's, it's or it might just it, be me. No, it's it's, <laughs> it's it is it's hard work. Hard I looked work. on Nira until we did this. I'd never looked at the appendices or anything, and um, yeah, that that took some time. But we were lucky on the show to have so many. Um, experts support people around us who whenever the i guess mountain of tolkien work felt insurmountable you could just say could you talk to me about this and they'd always sort of help guide you forward i love that and you know you were you were saying about uh leon you were saying about the sets that were all built kind of around you yeah uh and my cousin i've had a lot of friends actually that have gone to new zealand to uh i guess a lot of them are still up or something um or or the the areas are still there Mm. or something like hobbiton hobbit they've got is still yeah home to hobbiton yeah it is and i i don't fly and it'd be a a long boat ride but (laughs) um but at some point i do want to get there now you both are part of this world that tourists you know still 20 some years later are going to see sets of yeah how does that has it hit you the massive scale of not just this series but the entire lore you know Mm. literature wise we'll do it that way and um and you know kind of entertainment wise with with film and and tv has that hit you yet we were always very aware of the weight of the of the law and and the to- and the fandom and um therefore the the series you know fans can rest assured and particularly last night we did a screening here in new york mm. and it actually to answer, it answers both parts of your questions because last night was we as you say we've been on this this publicity tour for um what is it about four years now isn't it <laughs> right, um, yeah. a couple of weeks a week and um but last night, seeing it on the IMAX screen and hearing the fact, because there were many, many Tolkien fans out there last night, um, hearing their reaction to it and also watching this really extraordinarily cinematic piece of entertainment, it's really mind-blowing. Um, you know, really does, it starts to sink in, but it hasn't sunk in. Maybe it never will, but we're, we're, we're certainly riding this, this um, very, you know, it's a, it's an extremely exciting wave to be mm-hmm. on. I bet. Yeah. How about for you? I feel like my head has just been in the story. I haven't really thought about um, the reception of it. We were talking a bit about how you know JD and Patrick are fans, and everyone they brought on either was a fan or has become a fan just because we're so steeped in Tolkien now. So we don't really think of it as um, an us and them thing about us making something and then passing it on. It feels like we're in that same um, pool as the audience. And therefore, it makes it really tricky to think about, I don't know, a, a whole bunch of people who've um, been waiting for this gift, getting to unwrap it in a couple of days' time. I, uh, I, I really don't have my head around what that would feel like. Mm. Mm. Well, I can tell you, as that person okay um but you know I, I saw the first couple of episodes on the big screen which was awesome i didn't see it in imax but that sounds amazing um but i did see it on a big screen and i was instantly transported back into middle earth immediately and i felt the world that i thought that i knew so well as a kid mm. seeing the original films and and the original live action films and the um the hobbit films that this grew that world exponentially which i already thought was so huge yeah. originally yeah yeah and then to see it on screen and the cinematography is incredibly beautiful you know the direction the act i mean just from top to bottom i as a super fan was blown away yeah oh, that's, that's great blown that's away great. i mean you. it's so i was that fan opening up that gift yeah that, that you know you're cool. saying you had kind of missed and as that fan i'm telling you um it's it it's Incredible. Oh, I really appreciate it. Incredible. That. Thank you. Of That's course. So good to hear. And the character's name, uh, Celeb, Celeb, Celebrimor. 
Calabrimbor. Calabrimbor. That was really good. Really? Yeah. I, yeah, it's very good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, <laughs> as I was reading the Lord of the Rings books, like as a child, I was literally just making up the of pronunciation. Oh, yeah. totally. Like head. we all read it like that. Yeah. I mean, but you know, it took me ages to know that the, the C sound is a K. In, mm. in right, Tolkien. right, right. Yeah, it's so, a, it's incredible that um, you, you know, it's just a whole. Well, there are whole languages that were you know created. Um, by him. Well, in any event, finally, do f for both of you, what was it like playing in this world as actors? I mean, obviously it's exciting and all that, but playing in this giant um, universe, essentially, or Earth, you know, mm -hmm. this giant world, uh, quite literally, of fantasy and, well, you tell me. Well, you, it's, to it's total immersion. I mean, as actors, you when you get a role you, you you know you want to immediately seep yourself in as much of the world you find yourself in as possible um and of course with Tolkien there's lots and lots of reading um however with well in my case the character is in Tolkien but he's very um briefly sketched out as as many of the his characters are in the appendices mm. which as as you've probably discussed already is our, the main source point mm -hmm. um so in terms of building the character within the world that you're talking about there, there is scope for, um, you know, talking implies lots of things and there are implied directions that the character could go in, um, but he, it's left open. So it's, it's quite, it's, it's a very rewarding prospect as an actor to be able to, along with the showrunners and the writers and the directors and, and all the heads of department, because everybody creates a character. It's not just the actor, you know, I mean, you go into your wardrobe fitting and there's the clothes you're going to wear that informs how you play the character. You go to the set and you see where your workplace is. You know, in, in my case, I have a, a, a workshop and I see how beautifully and thoughtfully that's been dressed and, you, and that informs your character. So it's been, so in terms of, of creating character within that world, it's, it's you, you start from the bare bones up and just build and build and build. But the world they have built around us mm. is, is staggering as you've seen, but uh, when you saw it, but the thought and the passion on in every department everyone is at the very top of their game on this show and um and the passion and the mm. care that has gone into it all is is staggering i concur <laughs> <laughs> i love that thank you both for joining me on iheart radio um i i am so i seriously legitimately and genuinely am excited for this series to premiere so I can start talking about it with, you know, my friends and uh, viewers and listeners and stuff. I know they'll be all excited to talk about it as well. And I thank you for your time today coming and speaking with me. Thanks for having thank us. Of course. And, con and congratulations on the success. I mean, this is awesome. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Lord of the Rings, the Rings of Power. I am so obsessed with this show. Seriously, the first two episodes are out today. Go watch them as soon as you get home, or if you are home, watch them, or even if you're at work, turn it on. It's really, really good, and if you're a Lord of the Rings fan, you will not be let down. There's controversy over this, and to be honest, what I have to say to them is F you, because guess what? There are brown people and, you know, uh, gay people and blah, blah, blah in the world. And there certainly would be in Middle Earth, too. So if you have a problem with diversity in a fantasy novel and film and series, that's a you problem. I mean, get over it. You're fine with short people with pointy ears, but you're not fine with a, a black person. Like, just get over yourself. In any event, that's what I have to say to that. There's diversity in Middle Earth. There's diversity in our Earth. Get used to it. All right. Amazon Prime Videos, Lord of the Rings, The Rings of Power, is streaming right now. The first two episodes just came out at, uh, this morning, and it's going to be a huge launch. So I can't wait to talk to you all about it all weekend. Of course, my show, Death, Grief, and Other Shit We Don't Discuss, premiered this week as well please check that out it's very different from this show it is a 13 episode series following my mom you know getting diagnosed and passing away from cancer last year and then i traveled the country talking to experts on death and grief and loss and the after loss and afterlife and spirituality and all kinds of stuff so i'd really love if you could check that out the link is in the show notes all right i love you i will talk to you soon i'll talk to you next week 
We out. Thank you for listening to Pop Culture Weekly. Hear all the latest at popcultureweekly.com. Hobbits, hobbits everywhere. Hobbits, hobbits in your hair. Hobbits, hobbits eat. Shoot, my stupid phone went off.